Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you again for staying with the uh, All Australia Wadaiko Festival 2022. We have Graham, Joel, Ken, Mike, Yen, and myself here to talk about soloing. Um, look, it's a very big topic. There's lots of aspects to soloing. Um, so first of all, let's just go around. We'll have everyone introduce themselves and uh, tell us anything they would like to tell us about solos. Um, thanks, Graham. Um, hello, I'm Graham from Union uh, in Sydney. Um, and with regards to soloing, I always think that, um, you know, a solo in a piece should be a part of the composition. So in other words, you use a language from the from the piece of music. So like if um, I often tell people, if, if there's a group of people in, um, you know, talking about something, then when you join, you want to find out what they're talking about and then you can contribute. Because if you come in with some random comment, then people, it doesn't make sense, you know? So um, it's the same with comp com um, soloing in a composition. You have, to, you have to know where it's come from. You have to know where it's going to, to then you can you can um, present a, a solo and of course um, you know on a deeper level um, you don't try and do anything that you can't do you you want to challenge yourself but you want to also um, play play notes that you know so that's that's the way I approach a solo. Fantastic. Well, I think that wraps up our session. That's everything that anyone needs to know. Thank you very much, everyone. That was. <laughs> oh, all right. okay. Let's go. Let's go around and see if we've got other comments. That was fantastic, Ray. Thank you, Joel. Yeah. Hello. Uh, my name is Joel from Cairns Taiko. Uh, I performed in Japan with a local community team, and solos were not a part of any of the pieces that we did, uh, except for the one leader who got to play the Ordaiko solo. Uh, occasionally. So I didn't have a lot of experience with that coming to Australia. I'm still struggling with teaching it um, and even doing it myself. Um, we have recently had an opportunity to start doing some soloing. We're learning a new piece that was taught to us by Ian Hunter from UQ Taiko um, and that requires each player to play a solo uh, one after the other. So we've been experimenting. I'm looking forward to hearing everybody's ideas about uh, how we should go about planning it. But as Graham just mentioned, um, yeah, fantastic point. Some people come to the table with their own solo and this is the rhythm that they want to play, but it doesn't match the person before them and it's really hard to feed off of that at the end. Um, so linking those together is really difficult. Um, we're not at the skill level where we can improv that sort of thing. So it is going to have to become part of the composition that this is the solo that's going to be played by this person in this particular order. Um, so looking for advice about how to write them from everybody else. Thank you. Fantastic. Thanks, Joel. Uh, Mike and Ken. Hey, g'day. Uh, this is I'm Mike and this is Ken. We're from uh, Waitaiko in Hamilton, New Zealand. Uh, thoughts on soloing? Well, the first one generally is scary. <laughs> solo it can be scary um but i think as your confidence grows and also naturally so does your curiosity so if you have a good sense of rhythm and you hear a piece and you know you'd like to do more uh, sort of following on what Graham says we, we sort of go like as long as it follows in along with the theme of the song i like what Graham said about sort of like a conversation if you just bust out into something basically just so you can show off and show off a skill and it has nothing to do with the song and it just won't fit and then you bounce back but there's another side of soloing and that is the rest of the group you might bust out to a solo but they're going to know where, what your cues are if they don't know when you begin and when you end they'll just sit there and what is and what does the rest of your taiko group do do they just steer and watch you because that's not really interesting from an audience perspective so is there a way for them to back you do they do they just bop along with their body so it looks like the the attention has gone on to the soloist um, so yeah, there's a lot of aspects of soloing, but sometimes it's also just your personality. Like some people, uh, like you mentioned earlier, uh, Simon, you know, you're, you're pretty confident. So you love just like getting out there and doing it. And other people are happy just to kind of go, I'd like to be one of the minions and just keep on doing what everybody else is doing. Uh, I'd just like to mention something. When you think about traditional taiko pieces, quite often there's just one main drummer and a backer. 
and that main drummer is not sticking rigidly to a fixed pattern the whole way through. So to even traditionally, improvisation and soloing was there already. And I think it's been lost a bit um, with the modern um, kumi daiko, where suddenly you've got a lot of people together who have to really fit in with each other, and everything suddenly becomes arranged and organized, and you kind of lose that sort of sense of looseness about soloing and improvisation. Yeah, it's really interesting. I'm, I'm thinking a whole lot of things that I haven't really thought of in much depth. Thank you. Uh, Yen. Hi, I'm Yen from uh, Launceston. Uh, I'm part of Taiko Onijima. Uh, and I guess improvisation is a very big topic. But uh, I guess uh, I've had recently a chance to uh, meet one of my favorite violinists or fiddler online, uh, Martin Hayes, and, and go into uh, a lot of the, um, I don't play fiddle at all, just but just having a chance to listen to the um, online courses. And uh, yeah, so he plays violin and tunes, very traditional tunes, but he decided early on to spend 20 years of his time not learning anything new or not composing anything new, but learning how to express what he wanted to express within the tunes. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a very interesting uh, approach. And it, it touches on a lot of the things we talked about today, you know, like really in terms of music and soloing or improvising, it's really about expression, you know, a musical expression. What do you want to express? Do you want to be fancy? Do you want to show off, you know, a skill uh, in taiko context or, you know, do you want to play as part of a piece like Graham said, you know, in, in a sort of more jazz format, you're playing part of the context of the piece or you're trying to express something completely different. And all of those are valid obviously, but, you know, like to me, you know, it's a, it's a musical thing. What do you want to express first and, you know, and then find a way to do it within a technical, uh, technic using technical uh, uh, ideas or technical promise and uh, yeah, and putting that within a group. So it you know, really comes down and also the fact that you could express what you want to express within a taiko song. It's the way you play something that you could express the same thing. It doesn't have to be very complex. Um, you could do all those things uh, whether it's improvised or not. But to me, definitely, it's expression first. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, well, I, I think you've really covered so much, and I just fully agree um, with those sentiments. So, you know, I am naturally creative when it comes to rhythms. Like, the one of my first challenges when I was asked to play a backbeat was just to play the backbeat and not throw in little extra bits like i struggled i could not just play one rhythm over and over and over again um so my my natural inclination is to improvise and you've made me think of why that is but i guess my very first taiko piece that i learned there were solos in it so perhaps it comes from there that you know in my experience of taiko taiko is include solos yeah, from a number of performers um and then watching pieces like kodo playing miyake what i love about that is the solos is the improvisation and then the the communication between the g drummer who's occasionally throwing in accents in between the soloists main rhythms and that communication between you know, musicians is what I really love about solos. So uh, if I run a three hour beginners class, the objective of the, of the class is for everyone to be creating their own rhythms and soloing uh, at the end of that hour. So they do the call and then the rest of the students do the response. So after three hours in a first Taiko lesson in Hobart, uh, Perth, sorry, where do I live? It's you're doing a solo um so for me soloing is a really um fundamental part of taiko but it's not just creating rhythms it's the way you move your body and that if you can really move your body um really big to get some real accents in but also the ex expression when you're soloing the, the smiles or the seriousness um and the shouts and not just the shouts that the soloist makes, but the shouts of the team supporting that soloist. Um, to me, that's like a really important element of, of 
Tycho. So, uh, Graham, what would you what would your suggestion be for um, someone who hasn't done much soloing to maybe get into some solos and start experimenting a bit? Um, I think this is why I like I like composition so much because basically when you compose music, your your soloing, you know, it's it, it's the same thing for me. Um, and so I think if, if um, someone can, can compose, uh, or compose eight bars of music, they can solo eight bars of music, you know? And, and so um, I guess that's the way, that's like the door in um, for beginners, just, just to, like I said before, not to, um, not to do something that you can't do, um, but just to, you know, use the rhythms, use the language that's, already there and then and even if you just play something really simple on the on the taiko um that's fine and and also um like what yen said um you you have to um learn learn to learn learn what you want to say and then you work out how you want to say it and so the 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 first thing that happens is you you work out what you want to say and then and then um Technique, technique comes after that, you know. So you could say it like one way, or you could say it another way, or you could say it like this or like that. And and so like even with um, you know, uh, with a with a professional um, Wadaiko player, um, sometimes sometimes a solo doesn't really connect with me because it it's not part of the the conversation. So in in a way, I'd prefer to hear someone just to play something very simple and 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 uh, like a beginner and just using the language that's there and 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 like starting from a moment like it's it's presented to you this way and you're going to take it to there so um how how you want to do that how you're going to express getting from here to there that's that's what um um i think is important to to remember so yeah so just with beginners just just um just doing it you know just just like like even a really simple rhythm and don't be afraid of space also is what i tell beginners like mm. don't be afraid to just play one note and then just leave you know four beats of space it's fine you know <laughs> and actually as an audience member it's sometimes a really good thing to to hear that space because then you could absorb not only the sound but the space as well um but if it's all filled with you know, lots and lots and lots of notes, then sometimes it's hard for the audience to really understand what's going on. So you can express yourself more by, by using the space and making a, um, making a bigger deal out of it. Maybe, maybe putting, like you were saying, putting some movement into that space or, or just working out how you're gonna play one note rather than, rather than playing one note and then playing a bunch of other notes afterwards and thinking, oh, I'll just fill it up in, in that way, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, so just, using the language of the piece and and don't be afraid of space put as much space in there as you can and express yourself you know don't think about the technique just think about expressing yourself is the is the um yeah is is a, a way in yeah i love that that's that's fantastic um because you as a soloist you really are communicating you're sending a message and the success of your solo is how clear that message is to the audience. If you're sitting in the audience and it could be the most phenomenal, intricate solo, but if you're sitting there and you're just not really sure what's happening, you're probably not going to enjoy it as much as something that's just really physical, really impressive, simple on the beat. Um, so maybe think of your, your audience. Um, and don't feel like you have to do something crazy, just something that, and I think, you know, some of the enjoyment of us watching a soloist is just how, you know, excited they are <laughs> uh, and their, their, their attitude there, their feeling of, of that solo and, and they're sending out that such great happy vibes when they're soloing. So that's something to think about rather than, you know, when you're doing your first solo, you're really stressed and you're tense and, you know, that's hard to overcome it takes a while um 
now mike and ken did you have any thoughts about or how you teach soloing to some of your beginners oh that's that's a difficult one you don't really teach to them do we so yeah I, you may have to um direct their way of thinking a little bit because as, as far as i could see in computer language you need to have a ram inside your a ram ram random access memory yeah. of a library a library of <laughs> patterns and things that you could access so which means you really need to be listening to a lot of stuff outside what you're learning in the, just in the group lessons or in the, in the classes you've got to be listening listening to lots of other type of groups and even other types of drumming and let all that sort of go in it, it takes a little bit of time and then you, right. may need, you may need a bit of help to be able to pull those things out just a little bit of guidance on how you can you know access some of these things and how they might go together yeah just can i jump in there you are i think you're absolutely spot on and what i tell people about soloing is that what soloing is simply taking something you know hmm. and combining it with something else you know you do have to have a library and it's not just a library of rhythms but it's a library of hand patterns hmm. and you have to practice those and you'll make lots of mistakes and you'll learn from that but you know i might say it's not maybe not as difficult as you're mentioning it's as long as you know this rhythm and you know that rhythm you can combine those two rhythms in a, a number of different ways um and maybe simplifying that library taking some simple elements from the library and combining them uh would probably lead to a yeah a great solo so that, i think that's a fantastic analogy for the library uh mike did you have some thoughts too no, not really, but I've got a, I've, while I've got a Graham here, it reminds me of a good story. <laughs> and it's actually about soloing because we were performing with Graham and his wife, Masai, at a, at a, at a concert and uh, I did a little bit of a solo and then my, my sort of cue had finished and we were both playing Oke at the time. And so Graham was like going away and he was like doing his solo. And then I was thinking, oh, great. And then the song will continue. But then he gave it back to me. And I was just like, like, like deer in the headlights. I was going, what the hell am I supposed to do now? And I'm in front of an audience of people. So I just like had to like literally access that library like instantly and come up with something. And I didn't realize like, even though he did that to me, it, it, it didn't scare me. Like I had that thought at this, like, what the hell am I supposed to do? But I played something. It did pull something like out of me right then and there. And it was really cool. And then I finally thought, oh, thank God I got through that. So then I gave it back to Graham. But then he gave it back to me a third time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did so well the other two so times. I, so. so I started thinking after the bar, I got the third one. I was thinking, I was thinking how long is this going to continue for? <laughs> and it's probably, and the funny thing is, it's probably because I didn't know yeah. <laughs> what I was meant to be doing. So I would, I'll just give it back to Mike and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, but it was, it was, it was great. So I mean, I had to improv something, but like Ken and you guys were saying before, all I had, I mean, all I had literally was just the very simple fundamental beats of Tycho and a, a fixed set of patterns. And whatever my hands were doing on that, okay, at the time, it just made up some patterns. But because I knew the tune that we were playing, that's all I could access. So even being put on the spot like that, um, I, I managed to do it. If you asked me what I played, wouldn't have a clue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yen, you got any good stories? Yeah, I guess uh, you know, like my, my, I guess their thoughts, not not stories. I probably have a lot of stories. Um, you know, everyone has stories of how things happen on stage. Um, <laughs> but I guess further further commenting on the library and you know the analogy of a library, I think you know, like you know, the one I've seen a lot of people teach soloing in in a tackle class or improvisation, if you want to call it that. Um, you know, like you would learn it. I think the best way is to learn it like any other music language, you know, like to, to you know, do some research into what do you want to say, of course, an expression, we've talked about that, but also uh, look at the people that say those things really well. Like if, you, if you're picking up a guitar, you, you want to be a shredder, then you, all right, go look up shredders that are shredder really fast. And then, uh, you know, whoever that is. And then, and, you know, if you want people that are really subtle, look up people that are really subtle. So, you know, we, we're starting to have a lot of uh, content on the internet. You know, look up all these different artists that do these different things well and copy them. Copy them really well and learn the solos or at least listen to a lot of them, which loads in library. Conscious listening is uh, as, good as, as good as practice almost. 
So, you know, I, I strongly encourage people to uh, encourage other people to, you know, listen, listen to all these different styles. Uh, Joel, what's your thoughts on solos? I wanted to pick up on that uh, idea of building the library. One of the activities that we have done at CanPsycho is uh, an activity where every member was given homework to go home and listen to some pop music or maybe their favorite song and then come back and not tell anybody what they were going to play, but to get up in front of the other team members and to play that song. And we had to try and guess what it was that they were playing. So there's rim shots, um, different strokes, uh, different um, styles of drumming, uh, whatever you like, um, but your job was to perform in front of everybody. And that kind of builds up the library so that when we are learning pieces later on, we can reference certain pieces of music. Um, this rhythm sounds like that rhythm from something else. Um, another thing I wanted to pick up on was Graham mentioning not being afraid of silence. Um, Taiko is about the expression, your body movements and that sort of thing. So um, that's a big part of, um, of every performance, I think, and part of the language of that particular piece of music that you're using, that you're your movements also match the rest of the piece of music. Um, and one activity that I recall was when Tiffany Tamaribuchi came to, uh, to the workshop with Taikos in Sydney. She made everybody do a one note Ordaiko solo. So you had to walk onto the stage, play the Ordaiko just once, and then walk off the stage. And it got you to think about uh, your presentation, how you were walking, how you lined up, um, how you spread your arms, um, and then how you closed off and walked off the stage and kept everybody's attention for that entire time. And that's a really important skill for solos too. Uh, it's true, like uh, watching taiko solos from you know, all the different groups around the world really is great inspiration. But don't think you're just going to be able to do that <laughs> up on stage. You have to practice. If there's a particular move or a combination, that you've got to practice and practice and practice that rhythm. I mean, often, you know, I might have this idea of a rhythm in my head and I'll play it and I go, oh, but I've ended up on the wrong hand. Hang on. That's not good. And I have to practice that again. It's like, no, hang on. That's not right. But I want to sweep my arm. So, and so you've just got to practice and practice and practice that little move until that becomes a library element that you can. Yeah, but a lot of. But everyone needs a hero and everyone needs someone they want, you know, a hero is someone that's saying something you want to say in the best possible way. You know, you want to, you got, you got to find that thing first. You got to, oh shit, I really want to do that. That's so cool because inside I want to say that. And then practice will come. If you want to do it, you will do it. You will, you will spend hours and hours watching someone do something and figure it out. Yep. Yeah. That's absolutely. how people, yeah, that's how people learn music too since the beginning of time. Uh, so I, I um, actually, you know, even a little surprised for that some people sort of feel like they haven't really done much soloing or don't sort of do much soloing. Um, I have a drill, which I believe is a really great introduction to soloing, and it's called the roller coaster drill. And there'll be a segment on that. I'm not sure if it's comes before or after this particular discussion in the festival, but it, it just allows you to f combine two rhythms over a four bar pattern. And it combines those two rhythms in a number of different ways. Um, once, once you've mastered that structure, and it's sort of like a basic solo structure. So it has a line. And then the second line, it slightly varies that line, just a little bit of repetition, but change it up a little bit. Then it cuts that in half and repeats twice in the third bar. And then the fourth bar, it's sort of the long run home. It just sort of repeat, 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 repeat a particular accent. Um, but what I found is that if you can take two rhythms, whether it's Don Con and Doko Doko, if you practice this structure, then you can actually create a solo and all you have to know is two rhythms. Then you can add accents. Then you can add a movement then you can change one of those rhythms into another rhythm but there is a, a a drill out there which i've found quite useful and i teach that to our guys so when they're not sure about what to do for a solo they've got something to fall back on and a lot of soloing is just practice practice and practice and practice um so 
I think that that's that's a fantastic discussion on soloing, and I hope everyone's found something useful from there. If you would like to find out more from any of the presenters, definitely look them up and um, ask them some questions. Uh, and hopefully that we'll be able to send some links to some resources out there as well, so you can look up further information. Thank you so much to all our presenters, Graham, Joel, Mike, Ken, and Yen. Thank you for joining us. And everyone at home, I hope you're enjoying the festival and we'll see you again soon. See ya. <laughs>